Hey you guys, good to see you on Grassroots Gardening. So I put together this video. I'm gonna go ahead and apologize now. I don't know whether the GoPro took some LSD before the seminar, but uh, it, the video gets kind of wonky. I don't know if it's gonna turn out in the uh, actual YouTube video or not. Maybe it'll straighten itself up while I do the editing in a minute. But anyway, this is part of the seminar series I was telling you guys about. This is Gerald Stevens, and he's giving a speech or seminar on weed prevention. So check it out. And uh, the GoPro overheated like halfway through. I think that was the culprit. We'll try something different next time. So we're having another seminar coming up this coming Saturday on Lime. And I just think it'd be a neat resource for you guys to have here on YouTube to uh, just kind of learn a little bit more about gardening. So uh, without further ado, here's what's left of the video. Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. If I can have y'all's attention for just a minute, how's everybody today? It's a beautiful day out there. It looks like we're going to get our first little taste of, of, of spring, even though it's a little false spring uh, fever out there today. But it's going to be a beautiful day. I want to thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to come down here to Grassroots. If I have not met you yet, my name is Ryan, and um, we're going into, this will be our fourth spring here at Grassroots. And I owe a lot of my love for plants to this fella and his brother right here, Mr. Gerald and, and Ted Stevens, because they kindly gave me my, one of my first jobs, what, 25 years ago, I think it was? Makes, makes me feel old, but 25 years ago, I did an internship with these guys out at Nurseries Caroliniana, and my passion for plants and my thirst for knowledge of plants has just continued and continued. So if you'd have told me 25 years ago that I'd have my own garden center and one of my mentors, Mr. Gerald, would be speaking down here. I'd have, I'd have called you a liar. I said, there's no way that would happen. So I'm just super proud to have Mr. Gerald down here to speak for us today and very thankful for you guys, too, again, to take time out of your Saturday to come hang out with us. And um, well, we're going to have a good talk today. We're going to learn a lot. And then afterwards, uh, y'all feel free to make yourselves at home. We've got a tropical jungle greenhouse out the back door in the corner there with birds and plants. Uh, our nursery is down below. We've got koi ponds. We just put in a really cool new, what I call the uh, uh, the dream stream. We've got a 150 foot stream down there and a Japanese garden. So y'all feel free to mingle, make yourselves at home. And again, thank you for coming down to, to spend your time with us. And I'm gonna turn it over to you now, Mr. Gerald. Put this right here on it. It's all yours, buddy. Okay. Weeds, weeds, weeds. Who's got weeds? Anybody got weeds? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think there should be a hand not go up in this one. Um, I don't have weeds. <laughs> oh, she does? Not yet. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, don't worry. You'll get them. I know it. The longer you're in a place, the worse they get. Um, I'm going to, if y'all know how I talk, I just kind of take a shotgun effect and shoot and hope I catch everything. Um, but, uh, Weeds in the nursery business are our most, our largest cost. It's even more costly. Well, of course, you use labor for it, but uh, it's our biggest cost in the nursery is keeping weeds down. If you can get ahead of it, it, it will save you tons of time, but I was never able to get ahead of it. <laughs> Okay, there's mainly four categories of weeds. Now, this is my categories. Um, there are lots of categories, and this is just very, very basic. But you got winter annuals. In other words, they are the weeds that come up from seed. And you got winter perennials, and that's like a dandelion. Now, they come up from seed too, but they've been, they've probably coming up. Uh, from the root this time. And then you got summer annuals like crabgrass and stuff like that. And then you got summer perennials like uh, Bermuda grass or something like that. Um, so the challenge is to control these things. And then you've got it in, um, you got it in lawns and then you got it in beds and you got to totally change the way you do it. Um, for both areas. Um, okay, winter annuals, 
um, are like chickweed, henbit, and um, Lord of Bittercrest. No, better Bittercrest. Right. And Gloria, bless her heart, she brought me some good samples. Um, I have enough to share. There, there you go. But um, you'll see the green stuff out in your yard right now. And that's either winter perennial or winter annual. And I don't know um, which it'll be. Um, but the, like the dandelions and things, you'll see the little puff ball and you know it's coming to get you then. Mm -hmm. But uh, it had to come from one to start with, so it was usually perennial. Um, now, I'll get into, um, then you got your summer, I mean your winter. One of the worst winter weeds is called poanna. Now you think I'm saying it's southern and saying poanna. No, <laughs> Poor Anna, but no, it's P-O-A-A-N-N-U-A. That's poor, poor annual, and that's annual bluegrass. And it's this pretty little grass that comes up in your lawn. You didn't bring me this ever. <laughs> you kid me. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, but uh, it's a little, pretty little grass. Looks kind of like ryegrass out there. It'll be in patches. If you don't do something about it, though, next year, that little patch that's this big will be at least 10 times that big and then it'll just keep multiplying. So you have to, the way to control it is to put a pre-emergent out in the fall. And if you've got it this year, you can't kill it now. Well, atrazine will slow it down, and we've got atrazine right here in a granular form. It comes in a liquid form too, but the granular form of atrazine, um, it is the only thing that would kill it if you put it out now. But if you wait till it starts having the little flower head on it, it'll have a little white flower head. It won't get it then, but it's already too late because it's, it's got the seed coming. So it'll be out with a vengeance next fall. So the way you do it is you put out um, a pre-emergent. And a pre-emergent is what it does. You think it kills seed. No, it doesn't kill seed. But as soon as that seed sprouts, it kills the sprout. It has a little root comes out, and when that root comes out and touches that um, chemical, it can't go anywhere, so it just quits. In other words, a pre-emergent is forming a barrier in the top of the soil, and that barrier won't let a weed seed root put through it. Um, now there's one, uh, or there's several, um, pre-emergence that you should not use. And one in particular is the Scott's Halts. Now Scott's Halts, I don't know what the actual chemical is. I, I used to know, but I don't know it right now. But it is not good for Southern lawns. Now you will see it at Home Depot and Lowe's and Walmart all day long. But it is terrible on Southern grasses, especially Centipede and St. Augustine. It's what it will do is when the um, little seed comes out, well, all right, on the grass. Uh, when the seed comes out and sprouts and it hits that, it, it won't let it penetrate that and it makes a little ball on the end. Well, when you get put halts in your yard and the runners run out, they won't tack down anymore. And a um, lady called me one day and she said, my centipede grass is jumping. And I said, well, I don't know what the world are you talking about? She said, well, you need to come see it. She said, my runners won't lay on the ground. They go up in the air. And I went over there and sure enough, her grass was doing like this. And when they mowed the lawn, it just thinned it out more and more. And it was getting really bad. It was real thin now. So the guy um, that we really trusted, he said, halts is what does that. And um, he said, because it's just not good for Centipede St. Augustine at all. And uh, yes. Barricade did the same thing to our lawn. Good. Barricade. I don't so know maybe, all of them. Maybe it's the same chemical. It might, it might be. It might be. There's several that don't work. I know Bayland is okay here. Uh, and he brought a sample of Bayland. Did, uh, okay, that's okay. But Bayland works. 
But I like atrazine, but now I'll tell you what you've got to be careful of, and I think Gloria's running into this. Um, I've pushed atrazine so much that a lot of weeds are now getting immune to it, and so that's not good. But atrazine, all right, here's why I like atrazine. Atrazine is pre-emergent and post-emergent. In other words, if it's already coming up, it'll get it. But if a post-emergent, I mean a pre-emergent weed killer is put out, um, it won't, uh, if you wait too late um, and the seed's already coming out, it won't stop it, it'll keep going. So timing is real critical, but with atrazine, when that little seed is coming out, it'll still get it. It works in a totally different mode than a regular pre-emergent. It is really pre-emergent and post-emergent. I would use it as long as I can, and then if you see things are getting immune to it, then I would switch it with some others, but then I'd come back to it too, because there's certain things, atrazine's the only thing that'll get it, and that's that Florida betony. We'll talk about, we've got, I call it the worst weed in the world. I think Gloria will ver verify that. <laughs> I'm sure that other weed's worse, but this, the atros, I mean, uh, Florida betony is worse. And what grasses can you use atrazine on? You use atrazine on all grasses. Not Bermuda. Yes, you can. I know you can. Well, all right. Okay, I break a lot of rules, and I'm gonna have to <laughs> let, tell you to read the label. Hey, <laughs> yes, she tries to keep me straight, but that's not easy. Um, yes. Do you like the granular better than the liquid? I do. Um, we've got the granule up here, and it's cheap. You know, it's a bag of. What do y'all sell it for? Fifty pounds, twenty-nine ninety-nine. All right. It's cheap. $30 for a bag that'll do 10,000 square feet, and there are not many yards anymore that are that big. That's a quarter of an acre of grass, not just a quarter of an acre, that's a quarter of an acre of grass. Um, and you can put it out in October, anytime in October, where see with Bayland or one of the other pre emergents you need to get it out. Timing is so critical, you gotta get it out at the end of September, the 1st of October. Because if you start getting nights in the 50s, that poana seed's gonna come up. So um, you gotta be, timing is critical. Um, hold up your bag there. That is a bag of Bayland, but now, um, Ryan has probably got it in the high yield formula too. Um, do you have it in the high yield formula? Okay. Um, so Bayland is good. Um, if you're having problems with atrazine, then go to Bayland. What kind of grass? You can use that on everything. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, so I know, can I use atrazine on um, juniper? I got a really nice... No. No? You can't? I got all those weeds coming right up to that juniper. I know. Right and there's one weed in particular that comes up in juniper, and it is even hard to slow down with, um, with any pre-emergent. And it's called um, vent. Starts with a V. Come on, girl. Um, not vinca. Um, vetch. Vetch. All right. Vetch has got a little bean on it. Yeah, that's what I got. And and see the seed is is what I I'm, I've learned is the seed is so big that it it has a big enough root to pen penetrate it. So. Pull it all you can to keep the seed from coming back because it is an annual. Yeah. And um, so just pull it all you can and uh, that way you have less next year. It um, is an annual? It's an annual. Are there not some of the vets that are perennial? I think the vetch that they grow in the medians up north, I think it is perennial. Okay, maybe I'm okay, okay. I think, you check me out. I think it's, <laughs> and it's got a, it's, it's like, I forget what it's, it's got a name, and I can't remember it, but. Um, Just a clarification, for Bermuda, you have Bermuda grass. Yes. What is the recommended? Okay, we use atrazine on it, but here's what you gotta be careful of. It'll tell you on the bag not to use it on Bermuda. If you read the fine print, it says don't use it on, um, use it only on dormant Bermuda. Now, um, I have never 
in the 50 years I've been at it, 51 years, uh, I've never had it hurt Bermuda, but just be, be careful. Um, the sod company, the super sod, who's probably one of the biggest sod companies in the southeast, I said, tell me, Ben, how long do you use atrazine on Bermuda? He said, I'll use it up to June. I said, you're kidding me, because I try to cut y'all off in the first of April. But he's used it, and I had a guy to come in the nursery a couple of years ago, and he said, um, he said, I need some I asked him, and said, what kind of grass? He said, Bermuda. I said, always oh, way too late for that. And he said, my grass, isn't it? And I said, okay, <laughs> okay. And I said, all right, um, tell me what it does, you know, to your Bermuda. I said, um, I want to know, because if it damages it, I want to know that. And he was doing it in June, and he came back in about four weeks, and he said, my grass looks great, and I don't have any weeds. So, <laughs> but just be careful. I, I have to, we really need to put a disclaimer in there, because it says don't use it on Bermuda. And um, yes. Yes, um, yes, this is the perfect time for atrazine. Now, uh, with a regular pre-emergent like Bayland, um, you, when forsythia blooms, all right, forsythia is golden bell or little bushes that come out and they got yellow, little yellow flowers on them. That is a very good indicator of timing, right timing. So when somebody said when dogwoods bloom, but when dogwoods bloom is too late. Um, but when forsythia blooms, it's perfect. Um, but if you've passed that point, try atrazine, uh, and it should do it. Um, and that's, atrazine's gonna take care of a lot of different weeds. See, atrazine, most weed um, preventers of pre-emergence, like Bayland, it is grassy weeds only. So see, it won't stop a dandelion, it won't stop chickweed and henbit and all that stuff. It's only going to prevent crabgrass and it's only going to prevent poana because it's a grassy weed preventer. Um, but atrazine is broadleaf and grassy, so it'll get dandelions and all that stuff, but um, it, it, and it'll get the poana and everything too. So now, like I say, we are getting some, uh, when we've overused it, we're getting some um, things immune to it. But if it's not immune yet, keep using it. And what, that was a big fuss. I've been, we've been using it for 50 years. And there was a big fuss. Every 10 years it comes out with this big fuss on atrazine um, harming our well water. Because it doesn't break down, it's gonna keep on going. Well, I was at a seminar at University of Georgia. Uh, I'm a Clemson guy, by the way, but I go to seminars at University of Georgia in Clemson, Tennessee, all these. But um, when I was at the University of Georgia seminar, I said, let me ask you something. How far down will atrazine work before it breaks down? And y'all there, there are all kind of organisms in our soil that will break down all kind of stuff. But it will break down pretty quick even then. But he said, yeah, around here, it's not gonna travel over three or four or five feet in the ground and it's broke down. Um, he said, if it even makes it that far. So I'm not worried about us contaminating our well water around here because our well water is at least 100 feet down. So still should we only use it twice a year? Probably. Um, you can use it three times. It'll tell you on the bag. I know it's generally twice. Yeah, that's right. I just heard you say atrazine in the cornfields in the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Can we use atrazine in, in a, in a cornfield small garden setting here? I cannot tell you that, but if you go to an agriculture or go on the Clemson website on the agricultural side, it will tell you how to do it. I have no, we don't have labels in a homeowner size that will tell you that but it is good. <laughs> um, it's one of the few things you use in corn that'll get it. But you gotta know how to do it too, cause see, corn's a grass. And so you gotta be careful. Corn's gotta be up. If it's not up, you're gonna kill your corn. Uh, 
So that's getting kind of tedious there. I don't want to go there. <laughs> okay, um, like I say, I take the shotgun effect here. Um, talking about crabgrass and poanna, we've poanna, um, like I say, it starts coming up. And are y'all kind of familiar with poanna? Who's not familiar with it? Okay, it's a little greeny grass that's up right now in your lawn. And it's pretty, little great green grass. It looks good. I did have seed pods. I did have some, but I looked for the, Already? The, yeah, it's just some little grass pods. Already? But I, yeah, but I didn't want to bring it because it looked like grass. And like right. Seed pods, they were um, but normally it, it's waiting. Usually this is early for it to have seed on it. Yeah. But uh, it's just pretty little grass. Looks like um, ryegrass in the lawn, and but it's not. Uh, but if you leave it alone, it's going to get worse. But um, where was I going with that? If you put out a regular pre-emergent, you got to do that at the end of October 1st, uh, no, end of September 1st, October, right there. When the nights start getting in the 50s is when it triggers. Um, okay, crabgrass is a spring, I mean a summer annual. Uh, so putting out pre-emergent when forsythia blooms, is the timing to prevent it. And some people will put it out, a like a golf course sometimes, they'll put it out a second time about six to eight weeks after that first application to make sure they don't get any secondary. Now some of this like Dallas grass and Gloria, I can't remember whether it's Dallas or goose that's a perennial. Do you remember? Well, that's Dallas grass and goose grass and they look very similar. And they are real hard problems to control and I have yet to find a good one to con it because one of them is perennial and the perennial one is tough but um, then you get Bermuda grass um, which is a long grass but if you get it in your flower beds it's tough but it, it's it's we call it wire grass as a kid and uh, the only way we can get it out is with a hoe <laughs> and uh, but um, the uh, Roundup is about the only thing you can get it out of a bed with. There are some grass killers. Do you have, um, Ortho makes one called, um, Grass Be Gone. And it's only in a pump, but it works real good uh, to get out grass out of a bed. And it won't hurt your other plants. I mean, you can even spray it on pansies and it won't hurt them. I don't like to do that, but... Um, oh, grass stop. Oh, grass stop. Grass stop. stop. Is it stop? Grass stop? No, I'm going to call it grass be gone because that's what I know it is. <laughs> I'm not going to call it grass stop because I don't know what grass stop's going to do. Um, but grass be gone usually is only in a pump. and that. But Roundup will do it too. Now, with Roundup, when I do it in a bed, it's perfectly safe, and I'm going to go into why Roundup doesn't cause cancer, y'all, okay? So we're going to go there, because um, everybody's scared of Roundup, and it's not anything to be scared of. It's probably one of the safest chemicals we can, we can use. Uh, let me go ahead and go there right now since I'm on it. Um, I've been to four different seminars on Roundup, and you see all these ads on TV that it causes non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, is that right? Um, probably that man was gonna have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma anyway, but he used Roundup, so it, it's caused by Roundup. Um, well, the, I went to University of Georgia, Clemson, University of Tennessee, and then Monsanto. All four of them say that all over the world, these categories um, that test out all this stuff, say that Roundup is probably one of the most the most, well, the least harmful chemical you can spray. Um, we used to have them when it first came out, the guy would drink a glass of it and show us it wouldn't hurt him. And I don't know what his children turned out like, but, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I, I wouldn't suggest that, but it's that, it's that. Um, no, <laughs> no, he didn't grow any more weeds, did he? <laughs> did you use any of that? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> right. But um, it's, it's just one of these class action things. They're trying to, because it's a big company, Monsanto, and they're just trying to cash in on it. And of course, they're doing it. But um, okay, treatment of lawn versus treatment of beds. Um, in the lawn, you've got to have a selective weed kill. In other words, you don't want to kill your grass. You only want to kill the weeds. So this is one of the oldest and probably best. It's called Weed Out. You'll see it in Home Depot and Lowe's under different names. But Weed Out is a, we call it a Trimec. Um, it's got three different chemicals in it. But um, it is a systemic, in other words, it's absorbed through the foliage and kills the root. Works very good, but you gotta be careful with it. It is what we call volatile, which means, you know, if the spray blows over here and hits something, that's not volatile, that's mechanical. But if the mist, the smell of it, not the mist of it, but the smell of it blows over and does some damage, that's volatile. And this is volatile, so you gotta be careful to spray it on a still day. But, uh, and another thing about it, you need to do it above 50 degrees and you need to do it twice. Now most people will do it once, it's what it does. It'll look like it's killing it real good. Um, so they don't do it that second time, about 10 days to two weeks after you do it the first time. So you spray it again 10 days to two weeks after you do it and you'll kill it. But if you don't kill it the second time, it'll come up and be meaner than ever. Uh, so always do it twice. Um, but you do need to be careful. Now see this one, it just says weed out, and this will use on all our lawns. Uh, read your directions, make sure you're sticking close. It, you need to do it above 50 degrees. Um, and then this one right here is weed out, but it says crabgrass control in big blue letters under it. Well, the crabgrass control um, will hurt centipede in St. Augustine. So don't use this on Centipede and St. Augustine, use it only on uh, Zorgia and Bermuda. Uh, and you don't want to use it on Centipede and St. Augustine anytime, because it can do damage. Um, and see this is, you see this right here? Uh, this is 2,4-D Ammon. This is kind of like that too, but I would prefer to stick with the Fertilone Weed Alps. Um, and you'll see green weeds out there right now. Um, and it'll kill everything, but it won't kill Poana. It won't touch Poana uh, because Poana is not a weed. I mean, not a broadleaf weed, it's a grass. This will only get broadleaf weeds like crabgrass. It won't touch it. Um, then you don't want to, a lot of these chemicals will tell you not to use when the temperature gets above 85. Now, I've really had a I cannot get a clear answer on whether that's 85 anytime during the day or 85 um, all day. Um, I had a, you know these companies that come in and spray your lawns for you? Um, I won't call any names. I was in a yard one day, it was 95 degrees, I was, I was drawing a landscape design and this truck drives up, you know, real nice looking truck. And he sits in his truck for about 10 or 15 minutes and getting cool, you know, and in his air conditioning and I'm out there where it's hot. Then he comes running out there with his hose and he starts spraying the lawn. And when he started spraying it, I was looking at him and he was only spraying He'd spray about every 10 feet, but his hose was on the cover of five feet. But he was just getting it. He was running all over that yard, just spraying and spraying and spraying. And um, I said, young man, what are you spraying? And he's all over, all over. I said, well, can you show me the sheet on what you're spraying? Well, he was spraying something like this called Trimec. He was spraying that all of them. Well, it says never use above 85 degrees. It was 95 to 100 that day. Well, he went in the backyard, he sprayed all the bedding plants with it, he sprayed it all, and I was going, <laughs> yeah, I was appalled. So when the, the guy was, his name was Jimmy Stewart, uh, I called Jimmy out there and I said, Jimmy, 
call me tomorrow and tell me whether these plants are, are, are still alive. All this bedding plants. I mean, he had a lot of bedding plants. He called me the next morning and said, every one of them dead. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I said, okay. Man. So um, you got to respect chemicals. And you got to know, you got to read the labels. Read the labels. That's going to be my last word because I don't want all the things I say. <laughs> you got to read the label yourself. <laughs> um, but uh, crabgrass, we got that. Um, crabgrass, once it comes up, is real hard to get rid of. I'm trying to think if we have anything. This right here with the blue on it, that will, but you cannot use it when the temperature is above 85, which is when it's up. <laughs> um, but that's got quinclac in it. Quinclac will get crabgrass. Um, okay, cudweed, chickweed, henbit, all that will be covered under, under these weed outs. Um, and those are winter annuals. In other words, they're up now, or they'll die in the summer. But don't think that's because they die in the summer, they ought to go come back worse next year because they will. Any plant that's an annual plant that only comes up from seed, it puts on tons of seed so it knows it won't uh, be extinct in the next year. It wants to make sure you got a, got enough seed to come up. So, um, you know, you think, well, they're dying out. Um, a lot of people, I'll tell them to do something. They say, well, all, all my weeds are dying out. I said, yeah, but just wait next year. They're going to be a lot worse. So you got to think about the pre-emergent in the fall, uh, the atrazine, because atrazine will take care of broadleaf weeds as well as uh, grassy weeds. But like Gloria says, some of hers has gotten immune to it. Um, but try it anyway, because it is by far the best. Now, if you are using just like the Bayland, like um, in some of the pre-emergence, you're probably going to still have to use the weed out too, also, because it, those most of the time don't get um, broadleaf weeds. It, it gets a few, but it doesn't get them all. But this will. And remember, you always spray this twice, always twice. Um, all right, now I'm going to get into weed and feeds now. Chad might not like this, but I hate them. <laughs> I hate them. Let me tell you why. Weeds are up now, so what do you want to do? You want to fertilize your lawn now and get rid of the weed, right? Well, the problem is we should never fertilize our lawns before May 1st. All right, remember that. No lawn should be fertilized before May 1st. I'm gonna tell you why. Number one, you're wasting your fertilizer because it cannot use it until it's fully green. Number two, it's gonna cause fungus to get in your grass. And so I, when I first heard that, this was University of Georgia again. When I first heard that, I said, I'm gonna watch, and that summer when people came in, I said, when'd you fertilize your lawn? Oh, March, and I said, oh, really? And I said, well, don't do that. Or April, all of them March and April that had fungus in their lawns. Now, I'm not gonna say that you can't fertilize after May 1st and still not have fungus, but you'll have less chance of having it. If you don't, if you do early, you're gonna probably cause fungus to be in your lawn. Uh, he said, no grass can absorb fertilizer until it's fully green. So it doesn't get green until May. So um, don't fertilize until May. And that's why weed and feeds are not good unless you wait till May to use it. But by then you're so full of weeds you can't stand it. Uh, so, um, and then a lot of times it's getting too hot to use a weed kill. So weed and feeds are not a good practice. Now the atrazine he's got right here, right on here it says weed and feed. But it's not a weed and feed. It's only a weed. Uh, it has, it's, we call it 007, because that's, that's what it is. It's 007, which is potash. Wait a minute, am I right? I can't 
nitrogen, phosphorus, yeah, it's potash. And potash won't stimulate you long. Uh, so it's really not a feed. It is only a weed killer. I think they have to do that as a carrier for the product, and that's why they call it a weed and feed. But it's not a weed and feed. But that one you can use any time except when it gets really hot. You don't want to use it. And uh, like I said, it says only use it on dormant Bermuda. Now, it used to say it absorbs you there too. It doesn't. I'm going to have to let you all try it out. <laughs> it, so far, I've never had a damaged lawn from atrazine. So, um, but, but do read the label because <laughs> it's going to take. Um, okay. Uh, do y'all understand the difference between pre-emergent and post-emergent? Pre-emergent is preventing seed from coming up. And it does not kill seed, it only prevents it from sprouting good. I mean, it'll sprout, but it, it dies when it sprouts. Um, but post-emergent is on topical, it's absorbed into the foliage and kills it um, root and all uh, from the top. But it's gotta be there, yes. Did you mention nut trash? Was that about a music? No, I haven't. Uh, do y'all, uh, Chad, do y'all have um, sedge hammer? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Good. Okay. Nut grass. Where? Have you got some? Bring, bring one up. Um, nut grass is a toughie, but sedge hammer will get it in beds and in lawns, both. It'll do both. So um, use the sledgehammer and it works and it's not that expensive. I mean, it's not cheap, but it's not that expensive. It comes in a little tiny pack with a little granules in it and you'll say, this can't do anything. But um, all right, nut grass is what it is. It's a grass, it's real dark green and it'll just, you mow your lawn and in about three days, it'll poke up a little three or four sprouts. Now, I'm gonna get into Bahia too, which is another problem. But um, nut grass, um, it doesn't continue and have a big tall shoot on it, whereas Bahia does. But nut grass um, can be controlled with sedge. You got any? We've got the ready to spray, burn home, and uh, sedge, sedge enter. The sedge hammer will have it back in. It's okay. actually you mix. So a yeah. lot of people like the ready spray. That's true. That's good. I, I never saw that. But a sedge hammer will get it. And it works great. And it's like $15 for a little pack. It'll make a gallon, and a gallon will do a 1,000 square feet. So um, it works real good. Uh, and you can use it in beds, like in your roses or something. You can use it in there. Um, or you could use it in, in the lawn, and it does it. Uh, Shearford found out that it worked better if you didn't wait too late in the fall. In the fall, sometimes it didn't work as good. Um, but in the spring and summer, it works great. And you, I don't think it has a, you might read the label on that, but I don't think it has a temperature um, regulation on it about temperature. Okay. Yes. Okay, good idea, that's good. Okay, on a pre-emergent, uh, you need the water to activate it. If you don't water it, it won't activate it. And if you wait on the rain to come, sometimes uh, it may lose some of its potency. So as soon as you put it out, activate it by watering it. Um, now the post-emergent, that's a good idea too, because um, you know, like one of these, you don't, let, you don't want your sprinklers to come on right after you use it or you're going to wash all your product off. Um, so make sure you time it with rain and stuff like that. Sometimes it's a little difficult, but normally you can get it out. Spreader um, sticker. You see spreader sticker? Yes. Do you have any? Yeah, we, uh, it's either going to be called like spreader sticker or surfactant. Uh, um, we used one that was by... Um, Ours right now is like a Monterey, but... We use one by High Yield. Yeah, it'll and, be High Yield when we get and it. And that will spread a sticker. And it's a very high. good one. Um, 
We used to, we sold a ton of before we got the granular atrazine. We sold a ton of liquid atrazine, and this guy came through. He came he came through about three or four times a year. He and his wife they were an older couple, kind of like old like me, and um, but they would be. They, he was from Birmingham, and he would go to to Raleigh and visit their children. But every time he came by, he stopped to see us because he loved unusual plants. But he taught it like. Uh, Auburn, and he taught uh, weeds, and uh, I mean he taught a lot of stuff because he helped me. Every time he come through, I'd have a list of things to ask him because he was just really good. But he um, he said if you use um, a spreader sticker, that's what that is a spreader sticker. It's a surfactant. It's kind of like soap. All right, you can use soap, but the problem with soap is it will wash off like you know soap does this one once it dries it stays on so it's in the one they will be getting um or Wait, this so what, a lot of this stuff even post covid you still seeing people that have the chemical they don't have the bottle pops or they're missing one component so this was something to get us by with surfactant the high yield is probably a preferred brand and Really, whatever Gerald talks about is what we'll what we'll carry. <laughs> you know, because it's, it's proven. So yeah. that but, stuff will be coming in, and if we don't have something currently, it's usually just the next week away from the truck coming in. So we can always put you on a list, and call you, and we'll tell you it's here. But um, he, we was, I was telling somebody how to use atrazine in the lawn, and he pulled me aside. He heard me doing it. He said, "Come here." He said, when you put that spreader sticker in there, and he said, the high yield one was one he used. When you put that spreader sticker in there, it will, if you don't, it will only be like 50% effective. But when you put it in there, it was 85% effective. It was so much better. It makes it penetrate into the foliage better. So most, all right, a lot of the good companies will have it already in the product. But you can always add it. It won't hurt to add it on there too. Now, if you use the Quick Pro Roundup, a lot of people believe in putting all kind of stuff in there to help it along. With the Quick Pro, you don't have to put anything in there. It's gonna work. It is fantastic. You will love that product. It'll be your best friend. Now, huh? No, uh -uh, they're getting it next week. No, I don't think so. You've already talked to them? Yeah. Good. It's coming next week. Thursday? Thursday should be Thursday. Well, say Friday. <laughs> um, all right. Now, let me tell you, in a flower bed, when you've got Bermuda grass and stuff like that, um, and you want to use Roundup to kill all the weeds out, as long as you don't let it hit the foliage or the root of the plant, um, you're you'll be all right with Roundup. Um, you can spray up under plants with Roundup. Uh, and I always, these political posters, you know, the, <laughs> I won't be bad. I don't think you're bad. You know, <laughs> the political posters, you know, like they're plastic cardboard. You can steal one of those and use that <laughs> to um, hold up under your plant and if it's got Hillary's picture on it, it works even better. Um, but you hold it up under a plant and spray, um, that kind of, that's a shield to keep it off the plant. You just gave yeah. yourself so bad. <laughs> <laughs> like eight years ago. <laughs> I, need, I need to come up with yeah, another you know, one. Uh, or Biden, how about Biden? Yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, uh, but Roundup is so effective. Now, don't use it in vegetable gardens. Um, I think it would be fine, but don't do it. Now, it used to have a label on there you could use around tomatoes and things like that, but just don't use it in vegetable garden. All right, let me, have y'all got Amdro? What was it? You got Amdro? Uh, ant fire ant. Got, uh, I've got Amdro. No, you got to have Amdro. That's it. You got to have Amdro. Amdro is the only one that works on fire ants. I'm going to tell you that right now. And 
I like the little white jug um, because they have made other Fire Ant Killer, I mean, they've made other Ampros, and I don't trust anything but the original one. Now, if, it's, if you look on the label and it's got the same product as the little jug does, let me tell you why Ampro works. Um, our county agent for Aiken County, and she's from Richland County too, is Vicki Bertinelli. Fantastic. Wonderful girl. Uh, you'll see on, on Making It Grow a lot. Knows her aunt. She knows her aunt, that's for sure. She's a firing expert in the state of South Carolina. She said, we couldn't get Andro. We were having a hard time getting it. And um, I said, well, Ortho makes one, and Ortho's a great company. But Ortho makes one, and it's got the same chemicals in it. She said, Jerry, it won't work. Now, see, she's not supposed to tell you any commercial. She can't promote anything, you know, any certain label. You follow me? And uh, I said, well, we're going to use the one from, um, we can get the one from the Ortho. I said, well, we can't get Andro. She said, Gerald, Andro's on what works. She said, it's, all right, let me tell you how it works. Okay, first of all, the queen in a fire ant bed, you know, a little fire ant bed, is five to eight feet deep. That's where the queen is. She's down there. Well, they got to take the chemical down to her to, to let her, it kill her, and then the rest of the, the mound dies. Well, you use something really, really mean. And all we, I, I had about six or eight fire ant killers. Um, but you put that on the mound, and sure enough, it killed them. But the next day, you'll see them over here, right? Uh, it's what they've done is they've just sealed her off and brought her, up, brought her up over there. That's all they've done. So when you use Andro, it has got a smidgen of poison in it, and the ants will, worker ants will take it down and give it to her. The ortho one has a little bit too much chemical in it when they take they don't make it down to her. It kills them before they get it down to her. So the Andro's the only one that works. And it works wonderfully. It's the only thing you can use in your yard. All right, now, there's two rows of Andro. Never disturb the mound the day you do it. And that's so hard, because I gotta kick them. <laughs> but if you do, it will it won't work. Number two is never put it on the mound. Okay? Put it 18 inches, it's got a diagram on there how to do it, so look at the diagram. But you need it 18 inches from away from the mound. And if you do that, you kill it. On a dry now, day. On a very dry really? day. Okay, on a dry day. On a dry okay. Day. All right, let me, um, now you, here's the, the second method you can use. You can take a little can of that, for like 15 to $20, it's like a pound. You put it in one of these little whirly bird spreaders spread it all over your yard on a day that you think they're active. All right, let me tell you how people, how Vicky tells you to see if they're active. Take a potato chip, put it out around the mound, and if you see ants get on it, and you turn, the, turn it upside down in the way she tells you to do it. Yeah, on a very dry day. Right, you turn it and you see ants on it, you know they're active. So, and, but most of the time you know they're active, you can just look at the mound and see them coming in and out. But put it, put it, you can take that one pound and spread it over an acre one and a half. Acre. Oh, acre, I'll do it. An acre and a half. Or you can put it on out of a... I thought it said an acre, but we don't care. Okay. You're right. Um, and it will kill all the mounds on your acre and a half. Now, it won't kill them immediately because that's only enough to kill her. The, the rest of them have to die off because they can't live without her. Um, so, Ambro is the only thing that works, okay? Just remember that. We do ours once a year in our yard and we never have fire ants. That's, when, do you know what time of year May. you do? May? May. Okay. <laughs> Good. That's great. But you know they fly in from uh, all around. If when they do, they, uh, they can be outside your yard and still fly That in. doesn't kill all the ants. No, it only kills fire ants. It might kill all the ants. It might kill some others, but you know, we've got, I think Vicki said we got eight or 10 different varieties in, in, in Aiken County. And so it doesn't kill them all, it only kills fire ants. It doesn't kill all the ants. Yes, 
Well, no, that's true. Yes, you're, you're right. right. Um, but you don't want fire ants, and fire ants aren't native. Because um, they kill the other ants, too. Now, there's another little ant called Argentine ant. Oh, my goodness. He's a booger, too, and he's Argentine. He's not native. Um, now, I'll have to talk to you later about how to get him, but he's, that's not what we own today. <laughs> we own weeds. Um, okay. I know a weed. That weed that looks like a blackberry bush, I call it dewberry. It is dewberry. Okay, but you, know, you see it, you think blackberry, and you get a blackberry or two, and you, you think do. you got blackberries, and they come up everywhere. Right, it's a blackberry that gets in your plants and all. This is what will kill it. And Roundup, for some reason, does not kill that weed hardly at all. This will kill it in the lawn, but I would be very hesitant to use it under shrubs. Um, if it's okay, under shrubs. Can I tell what you told me to do with it? Then? What's that? Can I tell what you told me to do? Yeah, tell me. Okay. Because I had a lot of it, and I got the total. I didn't dilute it at all. And I got a little paintbrush and brushed the leaves because, you know, it's heavy, but it didn't go on the ground. And because it puts out, puts up. Yeah, it keeps on going. I had to do it several times. But Lord help, he got. What did you use? That? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I used the brush, not all the All right, brush. so what she did when it got in her shrubs is she just painted this straight out of the bottle on the on the weed. And it now. took more than one time. Right. I had a lot of it. What is right. Undiluted? Undiluted with a Excuse me? Brush. It's, it's dewberry or blackberry in your, but this is weed out. It's your regular lawn weed killer. But you gotta be careful around shrubs because it is volatile. I'll be careful, but I'm gonna use that. Right. <laughs> well, she, sometimes like, like with Florida Betany, you just say, I don't care what it kills, I want to get rid of it. Yeah. Now, let me tell you about Florida Betany. Um, that's the one we passed around that has the, the white root on it. Uh, Roundup can get it. Really? Yeah, I know that's what I said too, but Peggy, Peggy got rid of all of hers with Roundup. All right, now let me tell you when I think it works. It is. It goes dormant in the summer. So about May or June, when you see it starting to flower, if you'll spray it with ground up then, Florida Betty, um, it's got a better chance of killing it then because it takes it down and sleeps with it and kills it while it sleeps with it. So. But it'll probably take more than one because you have all the seed. Yes, there. then you're going to have all the seed to deal with. So you're going to have to do it more than once. May or June. Yeah. Probably June. Probably June. Um, okay, all right, in flower beds, we used to have this wonderful stuff called Amaze. We call it Amazing Grace, because it got rid of, all right, pre-emergent in flower beds. That's to prevent weeds from coming up. This does not kill weeds. It only prevents it from coming up. So you got to get it out before the weed comes up, which is when forsythia blooms, okay? Um, that is usually late February, mid to late February, sometimes early March. All right, we found this one right here. All right, let me tell you, preen itself does not do a dab of good. It's useless. But preen extended control will work. Don't, don't use preen. Preen is, preen is treff land only. Um, you can use that in the cornfield, but you can't use it. I mean, you can use it, but it just doesn't work. It only prevents crabgrass. That's it. It doesn't prevent anything else. Whereas this will prevent broadleaf weeds and uh, crabgrass. And doesn't Roundup make one now, too, that's a pre emergent? They do. Roundup makes one, too, that's a pre emergent. It comes in this funny little bag. Barrier. Roundup barrier. Roundup barrier. And he'll probably get it in. Um, Jeff probably get it. But when you see Roundup, you're worried it's going to kill it. Right, 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 right. When well, that's. That in the uh, when? 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 Uh, when Forsythia blooms. Uh, late February, early March. Um, yes, ma'am. 
You need to understand when you use pre-emergent, <laughs> if you dig a hole, you That's bad. Thank you so much, Gloria. She's my check. <laughs> um, she's been to all my classes <laughs> dozens of times. And, but anyway, um, pre-emergence is what that's doing. You're putting it out and it's forming a chemical barrier on top of the ground. When that little seed tries to sprout, it puts that root on that barrier and it kills that root. Um, if you dig a hole in that, after you've put the product out, you've broke the barrier. Does that make sense? What if you're breaking your lawn? That's a hard one to call. Because we always have a lot of leaf, leaf, oak leaves coming down. <clears throat> that probably wouldn't, but but what? I don't know, but it probably wouldn't. Yes, ma'am. For those of us with beds where we grow our own plant straw. Yes. And so it's just all of our beds are plant straw. Right. Do we, is it like, is there any point to it or? It is not unless unless you have a lot of uh, weeds coming up in there. We do. Well, so you we need pre-emergent. Pre and just <coughs> That's right. Sprinkle in and right. And use that one that you, um, yeah, use something like there's that. Hope. Right. There, so there's hope. There's yes, there is hope. A lot of hope. Like well, now you don't want to use the atrazine in beds. But I'm talking about in the lawn or anything. When you use the atrazine and you use the weed out in the lawn. When you put the atrazine mm -hmm. down, is there a time frame that you should put the weed No, down? not on those two. No, you can use those together. Okay. I'll get you. I'll get you now. In other words, you can use the atrazine and you can use um, the weed outs together. It won't hurt anything. You're fine to do that. Um, all right. Who's got Bahia? in their lawns. Okay, um, yeah. we've got a product, I don't know if y'all got it yet. Shearford, what's it called? MSM. MSM, thank you. Um, y'all probably don't have it. Huh? MSM turf. Um, it's a little bottle, it's about this big, it's only half full, and it will cover 20 acres. Oh my God. It's very safe to use, but it will get Bahia like nothing else. But just do not, get, who's got Bahia? All right, do not use this product under an oak tree. It'll get it. It'll get it. Don't use it under an oak tree. What's the product called? It's called MSM, turf. Um, comes in a little bottle. All right, now let me tell you, that little bottle used to call Ally. It was $185 for that little bottle. But it covers 28, so, you know, that's not bad. Well, it dropped down to 99. I remember when it dropped to 99, I started selling. I couldn't sell it at 185. Or it was one guy that bought it, I think. Or when it dropped down to 99, but now it's down to like $30. And so it's very affordable. You have got, I, I will give Chad the directions for it because it, it's not very clear on the bottle because you use like an eighth, not a quarter of a teaspoon, but an eighth of a teaspoon in a, two gallons of water Ooh. with spreader stickers. Got to have spreader sticker. And that'll do a thousand square feet. <laughs> an eighth of a teaspoon in a gallon of water with spreader sticker. We'll do a thousand square feet, and it works like a charm. You will not believe it. You said don't use it under an oak tree. Does that mean out beyond the drip line? I mean, oak trees. Have well, I know. How um, I, if you get out from under the, the the limbs of it, I think you're pretty safe. Because the roots will not. I don't know. It's far away from it as you can stay safely, but sure. yeah. How long does it stay active? Can somebody find it in the soil six months later and kill the tree? Wait a minute, I'm not following. <laughs> let's say I spray. <laughs> let's say I use it in my my yard, uh -huh. and it affects a neighbor's oak tree. Could somebody uh -huh. dig up that dirt and say, "Hey, you use MSM?" 
No, it would be gone by then. Okay, good. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you how we found this out. No, I didn't find it out. But let me tell you how that's how we found this out. They were bringing pine straw from South Georgia where you get a lot of longleaf pine straw. They were using it in these beds and parking lots, doctor's offices and all this. And oak trees were dying. They couldn't figure out why oak trees were dying. Finally, they realized they're spraying this stuff in the pine straw beds or, you know, where it's falling and raking the pine straw up. It had enough of the chemical on it. They put it in, in a flower bed and killing the oak trees. Yeah, that's just, you don't realize that. So that's why you gotta be careful with chemicals. And um, there's a lot of chemicals that get a real bad name and then there's a lot of chemicals that need a bad name. <laughs> What's the one that killed dogwood? You used to tell the story about? Roundup. All right, Roundup, don't spray out. Roundup around a dogwood. You'll kill it. Um, it, for some reason, at Clemson, when it first came out in the, it came out in the early 70s, right when we opened. And they killed all the dogwoods out in front of um, the governor, I'm not the governor's mansion, the president's mansion. They killed all the dogwoods. They were killing dogwoods like this because they were just spraying it all around them, killing the weeds. They killed them all. Wow. Killing huge dogwoods like that. Dogwood is very sensitive. Y'all, dogwoods are huge, but dogwoods, we're losing them naturally. Um, it's not anything really introduced except that diseases have gotten worse. All right, one of the worst things on a dogwood is powdery mildew. You'll see a leaf and it's green, but it has a, a gray powder like on it. Well, when we first started 50 years ago, um, powdery mildew was a tropical disease. It came out of Southern Florida, and as the temperature warmed up, it worked its way up to North Augusta. <laughs> but um, now, and then it would, cold would kill it and it'd go back, you know. Um, but now it is toughened up to where it does not um, get killed, and so it's affected our dogwoods. And we're just losing dogwoods everywhere. I don't. All right, there's some dogwoods, there's an evergreen dogwood that's, what is it called, Sheerford? You're talking about the, um, the evergreen fuse dogwoods, but there's the Empress of China. Yeah, Empress of China, and it's a, what is it, Sheerford? It's in, it's in the Chinese family. I, it's changed its name too many times. For me. I thought so, yeah, it has. But it's, a, um, Empress of China is one of them. I haven't had a problem with that one. That one seems to do real good. Some of the Chinese, American hybrids um, are tough to it, but regular dogwood, y'all, we having trouble with it. Never plant a regular dogwood in full sun, okay? And that's when they buy it, they won't. I'm gonna tell you why. I don't over overstate my welcome here, but if anybody needs to leave, you can leave. But um, a dogwood um, does not like full sun. The good Lord made it to be in the shade. Um, and you'll see the prettiest dogwood in the world. It'll be in full, full sun. But normally, it is extremely broad and not so high. I'm going to tell you why a dogwood doesn't like full sun. One of the reasons is its bark. Believe it or not, bark's real coarse, but the bark is very sun sensitive. If the sun hits that bark, it can kill that whole side of that dogwood and you don't see it for five, 10 years, but then the dogwood starts dying and it's, you'll see it kind of maybe shrivel a little on the side and it's usually sun scald where that happened. Um, if we, we planted dogwoods, we would like to, if we had that clear trunk, we like to wrap them with coarse like cardboard something coarse that doesn't hug the tree because hugging the tree is gonna make it get hot. But like cardboard would kind of insulate it and not. And cardboard, you know, as long as the trunk is exposed, you need to put, but the, don't, don't try to tree it up so the trunk's there. Because if you do that, the trunk's gonna get some skull. Um, but it's not just that, it's like, 
Um, anthracnose has got them, and powdery mildew has got them. Uh, it's just a lot. Uh, dog, one of my favorite trees in the world, and we're losing them. But the Empress takes more sun, doesn't it? Empress takes more sun. Yep. It it doesn't get the the sun scald on the bark. Uh, it's evergreen, y'all. It's pretty. It's just different because you know the leaves on the tree when the flowers come on. Whereas our regular dogwood, we're used to the flowers coming on and then the leaves coming on later. But um, but that's yes, ma'am. <laughs> no, the seed is so big that it's going to penetrate a pre-emergent. He's got to kill him. And when you're in downtown Aiken or wherever, there are weeds. They're everywhere. And it, believe it or not, its name is Prunus Caroliniana, like our name of our old nursery. But Caroliniana means from the Carolinas, so, but it's the name of the Carolinas. Prunus Caroliniana. Carolina Terry. I love it. She said, what about using uh, sheets of newspaper or cardboard and then mulch over it? That's a great pre-emergent. It works. And the thing about newspaper, if you can still find newspapers, yeah. the thing about newspaper is it breaks down and just adds to the soil. They said, well, what about the ink? Oh, goodness. We, we can worry about everything we want to, but I don't think the ink's going to hurt you. Um, now, what are we going to put down for that chamber bitter before it ever comes up? Atrazine. Oh, in the beds. In the flower beds. All right, that's the casserole. No, chamber bitters, not the. Oh, chamber bitter. I don't oh. know how to talk about the chamber bitters. This. Chamber right. bitter, you've got a. I got a little chamber bitter. All right, chamber bitter, that's, I'm glad you brought that up. All right, this is a good pre emergent deal to get chamber bitter. Now, chamber bitter, we've all got it, and we thought the nurserymen were responsible for getting it. But it's a little leaf that comes up, and then it's, some people call it the mimosa yeah. plant because they have a little mimosa shaped leaf, but then it has seed under every one of them. Yeah. Seed like crazy. Seed well, it is, a, it is an annual, so it's, it's not coming up from the root. It comes up from the seed, and this will prevent it. This will prevent it. Um, so use this in your bed where you had that. But if it's already in there, of course it's not yet. Um, she has this because it was in her greenhouse. So it, well, that's why she's got this. Um, but if you, if it still comes up, if you can spray Roundup and kill it and not pull them up, when you start pulling weeds, you pull more seeds. And I always tell people, um, pulling weeds is, is counterproductive in a lot of ways. You pull them and you pull more seeds at the top. And if you've got a free emergent down, you just broke the barrier. So try to resist pulling weeds. I hate to say that. <laughs> that gives you a good excuse not to pull them, doesn't it? <laughs> so pulling weeds sometimes is just counterproductive uh, because you're breaking the barrier, but you're also pulling a lot more new seeds to the top of the ground that are going to come up. That's why Roundup is so much better when it's that way. But All right, you spray Roundup after they got seeds on them. You got a problem. You're putting out more seed. You got more seed, yeah. All right, let me re emphasize do not use Roundup in the lawn. Okay? Don't use Roundup in the lawn. Now, the golf course knows how to do it. <coughs> Don't you try. You will cure your lawn. I've seen too many people do it. They know exactly how to do it, they make sure that it's totally dormant. And it's Bermuda only, because not, most of the other grasses don't go totally dormant. But Bermuda only, and they spray a roll light right over it, it'll kill that poor animal like crazy. Don't try it. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that, I've seen too many people kill the whole lawns. Don't do it. Even if the book, y'all printed that and how to do it. I said, no, 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 take that out right now. The Master Gardeners made a book, which was a fantastic book, but it had that in there, how to oh, do the it. Wall back. Right, okay, that was for you, huh? Yeah, the wall back. Yeah, not there anymore. <laughs> uh, but uh, so don't do that. Even if you hear a neighbor that's done it, don't you do it. Don't you dare. 
No, you won't, and you will kill your whole lawn. Oh, I've had too many people do that. Yes. Donald, oh, that's a toughie. Shivered? <laughs> Shivered. Shivered, he liked to pull his hair out over and get Donald in. All right, it's a, it's a weed that gets about this big. You see it from the beach. Um, we probably brought it from the beach. Um, it's a brown leaf like that. It's got a little stem up under it. But um, Astrazine is supposed to get it. Uh, so keep trying Astrazine on it. Um, Roundup does not work. Yeah, Roundup doesn't seem to work. Dollar weed. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. She would work on it for years in a spot we don't know we ever got. It's a water. It's persistent because of water. What's that? It's persistent because of the water. Right, 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 right. More, more water, yeah. It likes wetness. So kill your lawn out and then it'll die. So. I doubt it would. It'd still come up. Dollar weed is a tough one. Really? Yeah. Anthrazine's supposed to control it. Um, you might try weed out too. I've, I've not read the label on weed out, but um, that leaf is so waxy and tough that a lot of times things don't penetrate it good. Well, I'm kind of awful, you know, but our hydrangeas get those black spots all over yes. and we hate it. And we spray that F stuff on it. Did it do it? Yeah, I can't remember anything. F stop. F stop. F -stop. F -stop. Because I remember that. Okay, she's talking about hydrangeas in the fall or in the summer, start getting real dark spots in the leaves. And she used, we had a product called F-Stop. It's made by this company. It looks like a jar, just, yeah. just like that. But um, that is a very good chemical, Chad. You need to get the F-Stop, because it's used in gardens and fruit trees and all kind of stuff. Um, it's very good. Um, but you spray it early. <laughs> Yeah, spray it before you get the problem. When you get the yeah, problem, it, it's real tough to get rid of a problem. You want to spray it ahead of time, and that'll kill what powdery mildew also. Oh, kill powdery myrtles. Yeah. Right. So do you spray it like, like when the leaves come out? Or? Yes. Right in the bud. When the buds start forming, spray it then. Right in the bud. And uh, just keep spraying it for a while until you kind of get it. They say rake all the leaves when they fall in the fall from up under it to keep it off. It makes, hydrangeas, it makes them look so ugly. Yeah. And it's, and it's you wait and it's, it's already there. So you do yeah. need to have it. What is it who's? What is preventing black spots? The black spots, kind of big reddish black spots on hydrangea leaves. Yeah. They got brownish red, they brownish red. Right, um, and that, it does work though. And it gets real powdery mildew, which gets on, also gets on hydrangeas too. But you have to do it early before you see the black spots. That's it's just called way. F stop. It's got a dash and stop. It's what it is. It's um, it's ban no, it's not Banamax. It's cysteine. It's a, it's very good. Chemical. It's the best powdery mildew chemical I've seen. It works really good. But it's cysteine. I think is what it is. Um, any other questions? Y'all behaved yourself very good. I'm just <laughs> glad y'all. Thank you so much. Thank you guys again for coming. Uh, I'm going to, we're going to take us a quick break and then I'm going to kind of walk around the nursery. If anybody wants to kind of come around with me and show you how place runs, a little behind the scenes type of stuff, you're more than welcome to tag along. Yeah, he's, he's got some real unique things. One of the things Schubert has to work with a lot is, is load the, he heats the greenhouse floor with wood heat. He's got a wood burning back here, which I think is, I, I just love that. It, it works out good. So y'all more than welcome to join us. Uh, if you want to do other than that, thank y'all very much for coming. We're going to have another event next Saturday. That's when your brother... Ted's going to speak. It's on liming. And y'all, you think liming is not, is boring? Uh-uh. It's not boring. Hey, girl. Well, it wasn't horrible. At least it didn't mess up the whole video. But I guess the GoPro just got too hot, and that's why it started 
getting all trippy on, on us there for a little bit, but nonetheless, still a lot of really useful information in that video. And then next week, Gerald's brother, Ted, uh, is coming down to do one of the lime. So I'll put that on here too, and we all can learn together. Appreciate you guys watching. Sorry again about the video. And as always, the more you know, the more you grow. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.